Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. It was always described to me as if like the like when we're looking at like a 24 hour time frame or something around there that like the big step forward is to get enough protein and then there are like there's another small step forward to to take advantage of by parceling it out in like say three or four feeding sessions versus just all at once like you described um Mm -hmm. is that is that pretty accurate from from what you've seen in the research yeah yeah for sure and and it's very goal specific so there is this interesting phenomenon where if the goal is to maximize muscle growth that has a very specifically different set of rules than the goal of retaining muscle in in dieting or hypocaloric conditions so w- the body appears to be just very resilient and very very flexible and very capable of hanging on to lean tissue despite long periods of a neglect for protein feeding frequency or feeding frequency period uh, some of the more extreme examples of that are zero calorie every other day um, dieting where you see a where you see a retention of, of, of lean mass over, over a period of weeks or months. Um, now, if you were to flip that and make the goal to maximize rates of muscle gain, how to just try to gain as much muscle as possible in the shortest amount of time, well, that is not necessarily going to be achieved unless you optimize protein feedings per day. And that would come down to several protein feedings in the course of a, of a 24 hour period and, and ongoing. And so the body um, takes a little bit more nudging and a little bit more, more uh, special tactics to grow muscle versus uh, retain muscle in suboptimal conditions. And so um, the goal of muscle growth, the way that we approach that question is sort of from the top down where we look at what total daily amount of protein maximizes muscle growth. And then we work down from there. So that range, which I mentioned is 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. That would be sort of the magic range that maximizes muscle growth. And then we looked at the research, looking at acute effects on muscle protein synthesis of various protein dosings and looking at the higher outliers and looking at the protocols that were more relevant than, than the older stuff. We came, we came to the conclusion that it's roughly 0.4 all the way up to 0.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. That would be the protein dose that maximizes muscle protein synthesis in the short term per meal. So 0.4 to 0.6. And so just sort of doing the simple math about how many of those feedings equals 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram per day comes down to four protein feedings of 0.4 to 0.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. And so that is kind of the pragmatic heuristic of protein distribution to maximize muscle growth for at least four meals dosed at 0.4 to 0.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. And, um, yeah, that would be taken at least four times in the day. And then you'd hit 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight in total. So that's for muscle growth. As far as hanging on to muscle while you're dieting, it's almost like the wild, wild west. Anything goes, if you want to eat one meal a day, it'll work. If you want to eat two meals a day, it'll work. If you want to eat every other freaking day, it could tend to work. Um, I have my doubts about how well the every other day model would work with at the leaner that you get. There's a bit, um, you know, more of an escalating threat to lean mass retention. Um, but, but yeah, a lot more flexibility if, if you don't have the goal of maximizing muscle gain and you just mainly have the goal of hanging on to muscle while dieting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The interesting thing about that, or I guess the follow-up question I would have, if someone was like following a one meal a day program and they decided, Hey, I need to, I want to gain some muscle and I want to maximize this approach, but I want to stay as close to one meal a day as I can. Are they going to be okay introducing just like essentially pure protein sources for those other three feeding windows and spreading that out? 
or is there going to be is there some application with a carbohydrate or fat along with it that's going to make that more impactful from a protein muscle synthesis standpoint assuming they're hitting the right macro or i'm sorry the the, the right energy intake numbers mm -hmm. you know 10 20 years ago we would say that yeah combine protein and carbs in order to maximize muscle protein synthesis per dose but um over the past decade or so apparently protein does the job on its own if the doses are high enough so there have been a series of experiments comparing protein by itself versus protein with a substantial amount of highly insulinemic highly glycemic carbohydrate and as long as the protein dose is about 25 ish grams or more then no amount of additional carbohydrate uh, increases the muscle protein synthesis response when it's co-ingested with the protein. So this is a relatively recent finding or so within the last decade or so that we found that protein can do the job on its own if the, if the doses are high enough. Now, um, if we were to kind of nitpick at, at the theoretics of somebody trying to stay as close to one meal a day as possible, but still, um, but still, but still try to achieve um, muscle growth, or still try to push towards the max of rate of muscle growth. Then we can speculate that if the person uses a mix of protein types, fast proteins and slow proteins, and not necessarily just a fast protein like like whey then there could be some, at least theoretically, some more opportunity to uh, extend anabolism or, around the clock. Um, instead of uh, leaving all of the fast stuff to go towards, let's say, oxidation. And so we might be able to kind of twist the fate, the metabolic fate of certain proteins a little bit more towards um, more optimal partitioning in, instead of just using one type of protein, like a, a fast protein, like whey. So that is a uh, hypothetical and theoretical and uh, hasn't been looked at. What is the optimal mix of proteins for one meal a day in order to maximize muscle anabolism? That, that, that would be a fun experiment to do, but it's, it's never been looked at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That conversation I think has come up in like kind of the carnivore diet community from time to time where it's, I mean, you just tend to get more people who are in like going to do a one meal or a two meal a day type of a structure. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I want to say their, their argument was the, the transit time of something like an animal based protein is going to be slow enough that like in theory, you could hit multiple windows perhaps because it's just going to move through slower versus something that's a little quicker acting. But um, I think you sort of answered that question already by saying like maybe, but it's also all speculation at this point. Right. Right. It would be a fun experiment to do just all an all whey diet versus an all beef diet. Yeah. Who gains more muscle over the course of like eight to 12 weeks? Yeah. That'd be, that'd be really fun, but I guess nobody's interested in funding that one. No, not yet. Anyway, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Those, the carnivores are, are an ambitious group. So <laughs> who knows what yeah, we'll see from that, them. Man, that, that would be super interesting. <laughs> that would be super interesting to see.